house all together. Good morning, family. Almost. We got to let everybody online hear your beautiful voices. Let's try it again. Good morning, family. Yes, it is a good morning. The Lord woke us up. That means he has purpose in your life right here for this earth today. And we thank him that he is the provider and that he will give you all the provision that you need for the purpose that he has in store for you. So Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and to praise you in this house in this season. God, I just pray as we lift up a praise and worship unto you this morning that your heart is blessed, blessed, blessed this morning. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are y'all ready to worship church?
master, I thank the Savior Because he healed my heart, he changed my name Forever free, I am not the same I thank the master, I thank the Savior I thank God yeah. Yeah. That's how we start church, isn't it?
you get the glory. And in the healing, you get the glory. And in the breaking, you get the glory. And in the breakthrough, you get the glory. Can you sing that, church? And in the waiting, you get the glory. And in the healing, you get the glory. And in the breaking, you get the glory.
I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through the storm. Before it says, 
breakthrough, you have to have a what? A breaking. So if you want a breakthrough, you've got to have a breaking first. You can't have a breakthrough without being broken. And Jehovah Jireh is our provider, and he is more than enough. More than, exceedingly abundantly, more than we could ask or think. He's our provider, not just in finances, but in every area of our life. Amen? Turn to somebody and say, he's our provider. He's our provider. And then you can be seated. You can be seated. Good to have everybody here today. If it is your first time here, we welcome you and we say thank you for coming. To check us out, come back again for another visit. Uh, you'll find something different every single service. The Spirit's moving and God is moving in this church. Not that he's moving, not moving anywhere else, but I know specifically he's moving in this church. But if you would fill out a connect card in front of you or you can text the word Welcome FC to 84576. And that'll let you get in our system and you'll find out what's going on at the church. Lots of exciting things happening. This Saturday we have men's and women's breakfast right here at the church. Breakfast provided. Breakfast provided. So we'll have breakfast tacos. The women and men will meet separately uh, from 9 to 10 this Saturday. Also at the end of the month, the single ladies are going to be having a pool party with pizza. There's a sign up in the back. You can feel free to sign that uh, sign up back there. And then don't forget Young at Heart meet two weeks yeah, two weeks from today at Circle Grill. Amen? Amen. Pastor Harry loves a cheerful giver, but God also loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Pastor has been talking about that and emphasizing that. We will take it from a grouch, but it's also a lot better to give cheerfully than give grudgingly. Amen? So we got four ways that you can give. You can give online. You can text it in. You can put it in the bucket here. You can drop it off in the mail. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for this church family. God, I pray that you just move in this service as you already have. God, I just bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you as you give. God bless you. Thank you. I need to do something real quick because I have the microphone. I can do these kinds of things. Uh, Landon, come here. I got him in mid-eating. Come here. Oh. So my son, in whom I'm well pleased, just one of them. I'm, I'm pleased with the other one, too. I'm, <laughs> both of them. But, uh, he turns 20 tomorrow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He turns 20 tomorrow. He says he's an adult now, but I said, not until you start paying for your own stuff, you're not an adult. But, uh, I just want to tell him happy birthday uh, early, and uh, he goes back to school. He's still with me. <laughs> he's still with us another week, but um, we get to spend some more time together this week moving him into his uh, house in Oklahoma, but uh, I'm proud of you. Happy birthday. Thanks, Dad. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Landon. Happy birthday to you. Amen. I love you, son. Thank you all. Proud Thank of you. He takes cash. Is that what Dell said? I think I heard Dell say that. You're right, Dell. Hey, hey, and I, I will accept the cash for him if you can't find him. Amen. Today, I want to talk to you about building a godly inheritance. Building and also maintaining a godly inheritance. See, every one of you have 
or will, can start a godly inheritance. Going back to generations and generations in the Bible and in my own life, I've had people, my grandfather, my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents. I mean, the lineage goes on and on, and I have had the blessing of having them praying over me even before I was born. And I have a godly inheritance that's already there. It's just there for me to grab a hold of. Amen. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Some of you don't have that, and I, I, I hate that for you, but somebody's got to start somewhere. And I pray today that, one, if you don't have that godly inheritance, that you start it today at the end of this message. And then the second thing is I pray that you claim your godly inheritance for those that already have gone before you. Amen? So the passage I want to read is in 1 Kings chapter 21, and I'm going to kind of jump around in there and just pick some verses out that I want to read, but... Verses 1 through 3, it says this, And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth. We almost named Landon Naboth. I'm just kidding. We didn't. So Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden. After I read the story about Naboth, and as I, I wished I would have, Lennon, how would you have liked the name Naboth? He said, <laughs> give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is near next to my house and for it I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. Verse 3 says this, and this is a powerful verse, but Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give thee what? inheritance of who my fathers to you so today I want to talk about that mighty covenant that mighty covenant blessing on your life that you have that you just need to grab a hold of God has a plan for each and every one of you here today it's up for us to grab it and get it. he doesn't have to line up with us we have to line up with him Naboth to understand this we've got to go back We've got to trace back generation to generation. Naboth comes from one of the 12 tribes named Manasseh. We almost named Logan Manasseh. I said Manasseh. That's not molasses like the stuff that you put on biscuits and stuff like that. I said Manasseh. Manasseh was the son of a man named Joseph. Everybody remembers the story of Joseph? Joseph was one of my favorite stories as a kid growing up, you know, on the felt board, had Joseph with the coat of many colors, all that stuff. Joseph was the man who had such family crisis in his life that his own brothers tried to kill him. His own brothers threw him in a pit, left him for as a slave, left him to be locked up in prison for years and years and years and years and years, and, years. and he was hurt so bad. 13 years he lived this way. But then in Genesis chapter 50, verse number 20, we all remember this. Joseph told his brothers after, he had after they had thrown him in the prison, left him for dead, told him this. But as for you, you meant for evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. God had a plan for Joseph, even though he didn't think that was the plan, being thrown into prison, locked up into prison for 13 years. God put him in the right place at the right time for such a time as whenever he was able to then, what? Feed his family and take care of his family during the famine. So Joseph was the son of a man named Jacob. Jacob's deathbed, as Jacob is dying on his deathbed, he wants to pray over each one of his sons that he had. And he prayed a prayer different over Joseph. And it went like this in Genesis 49, 22. It said, Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine near a spring whose branches climb over a wall. In other words, son, there's something about you that's going to cause you to possess property. It's going to cause you to possess land. And anything you touch is going to be prosperous. And what the world is going to look at and think, oh, he's just got a green thumb. Anybody have a green thumb? I've got a brown thumb. You can look at my yard and you can tell. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> it's not a joke. <laughs> no. They're going to think Joseph just has a green thumb, but it has nothing to do with a green thumb. It has nothing to do with the green thumb, Joseph. This is a gifting. This is an inheritance that has been placed on your life, and it's for you 
to take it and grab a hold of it. I pronounce it over you, Joseph. It's yours. You're going to be you're going to be that way. And it's going to be passed down from one generation to another generation to another generation to another generation until it gets to Manasseh and then another generation. And then we get to the man named Naboth in 1 Kings. The, the name Naboth, he was given that name for a particular reason and that name means to sprout or to be fruitful. To sprout or be fruitful. And the 21st chapter starts out talking about the fact that he had such fruitful vineyards that the king looked out at Naboth's land. The king had all this land outside, had all these servants, had all these people that worked for him, had green pastures, had great fruit. But when he looked at Naboth's land, something was different. And the king became envious of Naboth. And the king wanted what Naboth had. You see, there's blessings that can be carried from generation to generation to generation to generation, and we need to pass those on to the next generation so they can pass it on to the next generation and the next generation. And what I hear the Lord telling me today is don't let your inheritance die. Don't let your inheritance die. We can't allow the enemy to come in and see a crack or, and, and get in and wedge himself in and break up the family. Because if Satan can break up the family, he can break up the family. He's done his job. He's done his job. And we can't allow that to happen. He wants to get parents not speaking to their kids. He wants to get kids not speaking to their parents. He wants husbands and wives to be disconnected from each other and be broken apart so that he can drive a wedge in there so that he can destroy that godly inheritance that's in your family. Blessings should never die. Prayer should never die. Worship should never die. We need to keep it going, and it's our responsibility to pass it down to another generation. If you don't have kids, there's still people in this church that you can pass it down to. As a church, we need to be thinking of not just the next generation, but the next, next generation. The song, the song we sing, um, Thousand Generations, you know, uh, The Blessing, goes on to your, it doesn't just say your children. It says, and your children and their children, and their children. We need to be three generation minded, not just thinking about my own kids. I need to be praying for their kids. <laughs> Giving should never die. Honor should never die. It should never stop in a family. I thank God. I thank God for my godly heritage. I thank God for my great grandparents. I thank God for my grandparents. I thank God for my parents that prayed for such a time as this. I wish my grandparents could see me now here on this earth doing what he knew God had on my life. From the time I was little, he said it over my life. Thank God for godly grandparents and a godly heritage that Heather's parents have. Do you realize how powerful that is? Whenever you have parents and grandparents and great-grandparents praying over your lives and then those two come together as one, that's, you, it's very powerful. It's very powerful. It's supernaturally powerful. I do have an advantage. Heather does have an advantage. My kids do have an advantage. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. We do have an advantage over somebody that doesn't have that. And I pray that you start that inheritance today before we leave. That you start that godly inheritance. It's got to start somewhere. The Bible talks about a guy named Levi. Levi inherited stuff because of something that Abraham did. It was in Levi's genes. That was a joke too. <laughs> you like that? I was in Levi's and Levi's, he took you a minute. Y'all were like, can I laugh? Or is he like, you can laugh. It was in his genes. God gave credit to Levi because of something Abraham did. We need to be passing down blessing after blessing after blessing to generation after generation after generation. 
Sports should be passed down. I'm a sports junkie. It's passed down to my kids. They're sports junkies. They're decent at sports. No, they're good at sports. Music should be passed down from generation to generation. Seth, Brandy, Aaron, Gary, Ashley, Tori, Mark, Dwayne. It should be passed down from generation to generation. You should not want it to die with you and taken to the grave. Whatever you have, it needs to be passed down. Whatever you have, it's not too small. It takes every one of us here. Entrepreneurship should be passed down. If you're a great business-minded person, pass it down. Pass it down. We need people like that. The only reason God gave us kids is to perpetuate the kingdom of God. That's why we have kids. He didn't give us kids to make them look pretty. Some of you need to. No, I'm just kidding. He didn't give us kids to just show them off. He gave us kids so that we can pass down what we've learned from generation to a generation to generation. Does anybody get where I'm going with this? Thank you. That's for my wife, just so y'all know. She said good job. It's getting hot up in here. Naboth was fruitful because it was passed down from generation to generation. And it was prophesied, it was passed down. And then the king looked at the vineyard and he became envious of what Naboth had. He didn't know that there was more to it than just Naboth being a good gardener. You see, you can be good at something, but when God blesses you and you use it for the glory of God, Using it for the glory of God. The Bible said that Ahab, he, he was so consumed with Naboth's land that he couldn't even sleep at night. He'd get up. He'd walk around. He couldn't sleep at night. He wanted to give him all the money in the world. Change his life. People would look at him and be like, whoo, that's Naboth. Look at him. He looking fly today. Look at that robe he got on. I'll give you another farm. But he stayed the course. And I love what it says in verse 3. But Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. What I'm trying to preach to you is it's in the family. And something in you has got to say, I've got to get it in my kid's life. Because if you can get it in your kid's life, chances are it's going to go to their kid's life. The enemy wants to, if the enemy can divide the home, he has won, guys. Guard your inheritance. Maintain your inheritance. The Bible said that Naboth was killed by King Ahab because of who? His wife. Jezebel. Jezebel. Outside of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the second best decision you can make is your spouse. It's your spouse. And listen to what it says in 1 Kings 21, verses 8 through 10. It says, so he wrote letters, so she wrote letters. This is how this happened. See, Jezebel is like, just go kill him. You're the king. Do what you want. You're judge, jury, executioner. Go kill him and then take his land. Jezebel, she, so she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed his seal on them, and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city with him. In those letters she wrote, proclaim a day of fasting and seat Naboth in a prominent place among the people. But two but seat two scoundrels opposite him and have them bring charges that he, that he has cursed both God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. Listen to this. God got so upset. Grab a hold of this. God got so upset that somebody touched the family inheritance. Don't mess don't mess with the spiritual inheritance that's passed down from generation to generation. 
God got so upset when somebody touched the family inheritance that he had blessed them with, he, as in God, blessed them with, that he poured into that family that if you jump down in 1 Kings 21, 17, it says this. This is off. Oh, don't mess with them. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who lives in Samaria. There he is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone down to take possession of it. You shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Have you murdered and also taken possession? And you shall speak to him, saying, Thus, the Lord, thus says the Lord, In this place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. They died, him and his family died an awful death. Read about it. All that was left was like, I mean, like head, feet, hands, like it, nasty. That's a bad. That's a bad way to die. Like I don't want to die that way. I mean, just take me out. I don't want to slide. <laughs> the dogs will lick up your blood because Ahab, you messed with the godly inheritance. Don't mess with the godly inheritance. The dogs ate them up. Don't mess with the godly inheritance that's on somebody's life and that's on a, the anointing that's on a family's life. When God lays his hand on a family and blesses a family, it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing, and God takes note of the enemies that try to come against them. Don't mess with it. Maintain your godly inheritance. When we're connected, one can put what? A thousand to flight, but two can put how many? 10,000 to fly. Watch this video. I have been asked to speak a blessing over you here at the church, your family. I, we're going to take advantage of that right now, and I want to say to you right now, regardless of what comes, it's all in the plan of God. Everything won't be good, but it's for your good. God makes it good. The worst thing that's ever happened to us, God makes it good. Mother and dad, God wants to bless you, bless your family. He wants you to have a relationship with him this next year that you've never had in your life. If you have unsaved loved ones, let me encourage you to encourage yourself in the Lord. Believe his word. He loves you. He loves those children. He gave them to you. He wants them with you forever. And you play your part. You do your part. You pray for them. Pray for yourselves. Pray for the church. God's not going to fail you. He's not going to let you down. In Jesus' name, rise up. Claim your victory. Claim your inheritance. Walk in the light as he is in the light. And God will take care of you. He will meet your needs. Trials will come, but trials make you richer and stronger in the faith and in the love of God. God bless you is my prayer today. Amen. It is time to rise up and claim your inheritance that God has for you in your life. That prayer that he prayed, that blessing that he prayed is more powerful today than it was the day that he said it. Satan wanted to take that inheritance that was on my grandparents' life and not even let it get to my uncle's life. He didn't want it to get into my life. He doesn't want it to get into my kids' lives. He doesn't want it to be in my grandkids' lives. He doesn't want it to be in Uncle Harry's grandkids' lives or their kids' lives. You get what I'm saying? Because once he can get in and stop it there, he's done his job. God wants families to hold it together. He mentioned that. He wants marriages to hold it together. He wants moms, dads, grandparents, families to hold it together and speak that Genesis chapter 50, verse number 20 verse. What you did for evil. I see you, Satan. I see you trying to sneak your little foot in the door. But what God, what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. Don't fall for it. When it starts to happen, don't fall for it. That's Satan jumping in there. Don't fall for it. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. Amen. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and I'm coming to kick him out of the church. Amen. 
You ain't welcome here. No, you ain't welcome here, as Seth said in that song. I see your little tactics. Don't fall for it. What, what Satan meant for bad, guys, God meant for good. What about you? What are you passing down to the next generation? What are you doing? We need to get a mentality that is it's so much bigger and broader than what we act. You ever feel guilty sometimes whenever God blesses you? Like you don't want to really share it because you're afraid it may make somebody else like, like you look at them, they may look at you like. You know what I'm saying? Is it just me? Because sometimes I feel that way. Like God will bless me and I feel like, well, I, I don't really want to, because then it may look like I'm flaunting it or I'm, you know what I'm saying? No. You don't get it. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He took the cursing, the curses of death. He took the curse of Satan to give us life. And then the scripture says to give it to us what? More abundantly. The L-Y means a continuing. The spiritual inheritance that you have is much more powerful than any manifestation of the enemy in your family. Satan may come into your life and deceive himself like he's going to do to make it look for the better like he did with Adam and Eve and make you think that it's going to be for the better and that it is that way, but that's not the case. This morning when I woke up, I woke up early in the morning and then I, mean, I went back to sleep. I didn't stay up the whole time, but I woke up, but I heard God speaking to me and I heard him say this, and this is for somebody here today other than just me. Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar. Somebody needed to hear that. If nobody else needed to hear it, I needed to hear it. <laughs> Satan is a liar. I needed to hear that. If he's saying it, he's a liar. If he's decreeing it, he's a liar. If he's manifesting it, he's a liar. Anything that he does, he's a what? And the father of what? There you go. Say it again real loud. We know how he's going to come. I'll leave the how up to Jesus. A lot of things happen and a lot of things, will, you know, you, God will speak to me and say things to me. And I'm like, how? I'm going to leave the how up to him. I'm going to leave the, this is a hard one, the when. I'm going to leave the when up to him, not wind, not wind, when, like when it's going to happen. I'm going to leave it up to Jesus because God is never late. He's always on time. You may say, but my kid's on drugs. Satan's a liar. My kid's an alcoholic. He's a liar. My kid's not saved. He's a liar. You don't understand it. Yes, I do understand it. Satan is a liar. He's a liar. If you're here today and you have family, this is going to be kind of different. If you're here today and you have family with you, I want you to get with your family. You may already be sitting with them, but I want you to be with your family. Everybody already sitting with their family? Or maybe you're like, well, I ain't got my family here, Pastor. I'm sorry. But I want you to get with your family. Stand with me since everybody's there. If you don't have family here, guess what? You represent your family. You represent your family. I want you to receive the spiritual inheritance that God has for you, that God has for your family. God doesn't want to take life from you. He wants to give you life. He wants to give you life. God's got, the, God's got the long range plan for your life. You may not see it, but he's got the long range plan for your life and he wants to give it to you. You don't understand it. You can't put any sense to it, like I said, but God has a plan for each and every one of you here today. And the word I want you to hear is Satan's a liar. He's a liar. 
Another verse God gave me, not this morning, but he gave it to me this week, was Psalms 92, 12 through 14. And it says this, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those, this is the verse right here, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall what? Flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. And what I hear God saying to add on top of that is get in church. Get your family in church so that they can be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth life. So that when Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy, they can be grounded, standing firm in good soil. Does that make sense? I want each and every one of us to flourish. I want your families to flourish. The righteous shall flourish like a... Isn't a palm tree beautiful? Especially on the beach. It can withstand storms. That's exactly right. Not winter storms. Sometimes they die in the way. <laughs> no, no, but you're right. No, I hear, I hear what you're saying. All those things, they can withstand it. Those, <laughs> those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Get your feet planted in the house of the Lord so that you will flourish. I ask them to sing this song, The Blessing. I can't think of a better way to close our service than singing this song. And as they sing this song, I want you to just put your arm around your family, put them around your kids, put them around your grandkids. If they're not here, just pretend that you got your arms around them. And just think about this song. Because I want your families to be blessed and, be, and flourish. Amen? Y'all go ahead and sing it.
and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children
and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family. family together when you marry into the soul family you're stuck, you're stuck. <laughs> amen. amen Craig <laughs> and here's the deal as Pastor Harry told my grandfather that he would do whatever he can I'm here to tell in front of you guys in front of them whatever I have to do to follow in that I'm going to do that Whatever God has, excuse me, whatever Satan's going to try to do to this family, it ain't happening. He ain't coming in. There's not going to be a door that's cracked. We're going to pray a hedge against that. And whatever God has in store for this family and this church, I don't know leave the wind. I said in my message, I leave the how, I leave the wind up to Jesus. But I make this promise to you, this church, to God, it ain't happening. And it's up to Heather, you, me, Beth, Auntie, Coach, Britt, Craig, Lisa, Keith, Stephanie. We gotta keep each other accountable. And we gotta pray for these kids and these grandkids and our future kids so that one day whenever they're st- there's a reason my grandfather started and I know I'm going along but just sorry there's a reason my grandfather was called into ministry and passed it down to my uncle and it's passing down to myself it's going to stay in the family somewhere 55 years down the road I'll be dead and gone hopefully not I mean 
I'm, woo. I'm just kidding. Actually, that's not that. That's not that long, is it? Anyways, but 55 years down the road, this church is still going to be going, and I believe somebody in this family will be pastoring that church. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be my kid. It doesn't mean it's going to be Stephanie's kid. It doesn't mean it's going to be Kevin's kid or Craig and Lisa's grandkids, Beth and Rick. Somebody in this family is going to be pastor in this church. And it all started with a man named Harrison Marie Sewell and Jimmy Laverne Sewell. And it's being passed down to generation to generation. My two kids can make me so happy just about all the time. But nothing makes me more excited than whenever I jump on their social media and I see something that they post about the service, something devotional-wise. They don't do it because mom and dad say to do it. They do it because God showed them something and it spoke to them and they send it out to everybody else see. Do they mess up? Heck yeah, they mess up. Are they perfect? Heck no, they're not perfect but they strive for that and I'm proud of them and I'm proud of the heritage that's being passed down to them just as I'm proud as it is to Kevin and Mackenzie and Olivia, Chase, Brock, Channing, uh, Kelsey, I'm gonna say Kenzie again, Kelsey, all of the family. And what I wanna do, Pastor Drew, can you pray? Oh. <laughs> Davis, I'm switching mics. Because here's what's going to happen. When you stand up and you say something, Satan's going to attack you in that area. And what I want is for this family, Drew, uh, you're good to pray, right? You're going to do it no matter what. I want you to pray for our family that when the enemy tries to come, it ain't happening. Because he's going to attack this family. He attacked, he's already attacking this family. But we ain't having it. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Pray for that, and then pray for these people here. Amen? Amen. Let's, before I pray, I want, I want to just, something on my heart. It's on in your heart, too. So. Um, I want to say something real quick. Is We're going to pray over your family and this family, but I also believe that God has the same thing in store for every family in this room. Yeah. And as we were worshiping, as we were praying, it was just me and my mom, and then all of a sudden my dad came up and just kind of wrapped around us. And it's just a reminder that God has big things in store for your family. You might not see it today, but it's coming. And sometimes the Lord will show me that you have, you have to be the one to start it. So something might not have been passed down to you, but God's going to give you the strength to start it right where you are. So you might be the first person in your family to start the godly inheritance and start the godly legacy. But he will do it through you because he's faithful and he's just. So I just want to encourage you with that as we pray over your family because we already know God's doing great and mighty things. But I want to also encourage you that the devil has no authority whatsoever. I was told this, that the only authority the devil has is what you give him. So if you give him the authority to take over your life, then he will. But if you step on his head and say, you have no authority in my life, guess what? He doesn't. So that's what we're going to pray today. Amen. So if you want to receive that as well, just raise your hand. Maybe put your, put your other hand on the family member. And we're going to pray for your families today. You're here today. So we pray that God will show up today. And then if you would, maybe just extend a hand to the to the, the suitor and the soul and all the, it's a lot of last names. Forgive me, guys. This family right here. So, Father God, we love you. We give you the glory and we give you the honor. Lord, that you reign supreme in our hearts and lives today. You are the reason why we are here today. You're the very reason we walked into the doors of the church, God. It's not because of the the worship or the preaching or the building. It's because of you. God, you have changed our hearts. You have changed our lives. We've seen what you have done in our family and our friends and all around the world. And we know what you can do in our life today. So, God, we pray that from this moment forward, every family in this room is going to be a godly family, that they're going to raise their banners high in Jesus' name. Lord, when you walk by their house, you'll know it's a godly house. When you walk by these people, you'll know they're godly people. Lord, you can recognize them by their fruit. And I pray that no weapon formed against them today shall prosper. All that rise against them will fall. The devil has no authority whatsoever in their life. We pray that.
that he's not, that he has no authority in their present. He has no authority in their future. God, he has no authority of bringing the past back up in their life. God, you have redeemed them. You have saved them. Lord, you have redeemed the time in their life. God, you have, you have appointed them such a time as this. So, God, we pray that healing will abide in their home today. We pray that righteousness will abide in their home today. We pray that holiness will abide in their house today. God, we pray that these are godly mothers and godly fathers, godly sons and godly daughters. God, we pray that forgiveness will abound in the home today. Lord, that you bring the family today closer together than it's ever been. God, we pray that the blessings of God will flow down from the head down the beard all the way down to the feet in Jesus' name. God, each and every one of these families are going to walk according to the statutes of heaven. God, they don't care about the world. They don't care about what the world has to offer. They don't care how many laws and decrees that the world may pass. God, they care about you and they care about your word. God, I pray from this day forward, they will walk according to your word all the days of their life. What your word says, they will be. What their word says, who they are over their kids, over their families, over their schools. God, let them give them a new perspective in Jesus' name. It's like looking through a scope of a rifle. God, give them a new perspective in Jesus' name. Help them be on point. Help them be sharp. God, give them the wisdom to pray for their family the right way, the way that you called them to. God, I pray they don't give up in Jesus' name. Lord, you strengthen their arms, strengthen their, and give them endurance for all the days of their life as he who endures to the end shall be saved. Lord, and let them pass down godly things to their kids. Let their kids be able to look up and say, my dad and my mom were the most godly people on this planet. They feared the Lord and all that they did. And we give you the glory that this is a godly church in Jesus' name, that the families that attend are a godly family in Jesus' name. I pray you change the direction in their life today in Jesus' name. I pray for the ones that don't have a godly inheritance. Today they will. Today from this mo this moment forward, they will be a godly family and passing down in a godly inheritance for 10,000 generations for the family they never even met yet. They don't even know will ever exist. Will be saved, living for you, bought with a price because of what you're done in their life and we give you the glory and the honor today in Jesus name amen amen thank you amen as they sing and play us out of here however we're going we'll receive the building fund the parking lot should be started I would say within the next month you'll start to see dirt fly it's exciting that's exciting so if you have your building fund you can give it to the buckets here online all that jazz amen god bless you as you go we love you and we'll see you this week again again